Hello everyone, welcome to Intro to Maya. So this is the second video. We're going to be looking into the user interface um, uh, of Maya. So the, think about it this way. Um, it is like um, essentially what the buttons for you to set the commands to be able to navigate around this piece of software and being able to understand, okay, what buttons you need to press in order to do the command. So this is the, the user interface, right? And when it comes to the user interface, we're going to be looking at the next summary of things. So we're going to have a bit of an overall map to know, all right, so where are the things, more or less? Um, and we're going to go in this overall map, we're going to have the viewport, we're going to have the toolbox and its shortcuts. We're going to have the, sh the shelves, the channel box. Where's the animation uh, timeline, which is, in all honesty, we're not going to be using it much uh, for, for these and also uh, some benefits on what happens when we use the spacebar or when we tap the spacebar and also how we can change some of these views while using the spacebar as well. So when it comes uh, to the user interface, and I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so we can see a little bit better uh, what I'm doing there. I'm just going to put that there. And I'm also going to put my phone on silence because I hate notifications. Um, so Maya at first uh, might seem a little bit overwhelming because if you're looking at this at the moment, it really does look like there is a lot of buttons, right? So um, each of these fellas here is a button and each of these fellas can do a thing, right? And a lot of you might be looking at this thinking, wow, oh my God, there is just so much that you can do and there are so many buttons and uh, this is really, really, really distracting right now. And uh, what do I press? Where do I go? But uh, this is uh, far from the truth uh, because there is a logic on the different departments that you can click. And there, in once you understand what are the most important areas for you to navigate or what to click, you don't need to learn every single button or every single thing. In fact, there is uh, different uh, disciplines that you can do within Maya. You can do, you can do 3D modeling, you can do UVs, you can do animation, or you can do rigging, and you don't need to learn every single thing. So you don't need to learn every single part of the software. So what's most important to, to understand about Maya at the very beginning is what are different parts of uh, this UI. And once you have that grasp, then it's very easy to understand the software and where to find things. And this applies to any software that you learn. Once you understand what device, what areas, and where to find the different areas, then it's very, very easy. So I'm going to go this uh, rather quickly. And then after that, um, we can just explore all of these things uh, together a second time. Uh, while we open Maya, but here we have the viewport, which is essentially your canvas where you are going to be uh, creating your tools and modifying your tools or sorry, creating your primitives or modifying your primitives or navigating with your camera and navigating around the world. Um, and later we're going to be in the, th in the third video, we're going to be learning how to pan, how to zoom and how to orbit to navigate within this uh, viewport. Um, after the viewport on the left, where you have the mouse, the brush, uh, the four arrows and all these uh, icons here on the left, we have the toolbox. So the toolbox is essentially where you can change uh, how, what to select, what to move, what to rotate, and what to scale, uh, and the objects within your scene. Um, I do, however, recommend that you stay away from clicking on those buttons and you change those by using 
the buttons, uh, and I will explain this in depth a little bit later by pressing Q, W, E, and R. But, uh, however, that's the toolbox. Um, just a little bit of an up ahead. We have up here, we have the shelf. And the shelf is essentially a series of uh, shortcuts of the most commonly tools uh, for the different things. So here currently we have uh, polymodeling. And here on the left, you have a series of primitives that you can create. So if you want to create some primitives, this is a very convenient way of doing it. But also you can delete your history, freeze transforms and so forth. But if you click in the top areas up here, you can change the different uh, modeling shortcuts uh, that you've got there as well. It's essentially a way to streamline uh, your workflow. Uh, looking next, so here, you have, uh, just like I was telling you um, earlier, and I'll change this very quickly to to my, like I was saying earlier, you, you have different disciplines on things that you can do within Maya. Most of the time, we're going to be doing things uh, with the modeling. So if we zoom here a little bit closer, you've got things like your, you've got your modeling, Right, which is the one that we're going to be using the most. And whenever you click on this, on this menu here, this is called a menu set. That's, that's awful writing, menu set. And what happens with these menu sets, it essentially changes these menus here on the right. So if I change that very quickly here, and I go from modeling to rigging, rigging to animation, animation to visual effects, these menus here essentially swap to different things. Most of the time we'll be using the modeling uh, menu set, which is this one here. And then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be essentially going most of the time through these menus here. And that's gonna be the most important menu sets that we're gonna be using for the 3D modeling uh, introductory course that we got here. Uh, moving on with the menu sets, after that we have down here, we have the animation timeline. Um, this is where you can do animation and you can control the timing of the animation, which is divided by frame. So um, if you usually when you watch a movie, it, you have 24 frames a second. If you're watching Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, maybe it's 40 or 48 frames. If you're playing video games, it can be 60 frames a second, yes. but Usually it is uh, where you can set animation. We will not be covering this much at all for this introduction. So uh, later at some point, uh, we will be removing this entirely. Um, by the way, something that I just remembered, if for whatever reason you do have something that's completely different UI and it's all different, you can go up here where it says workspace on the top part of this menu up here. And then you can reset the workspace so it is only uh, the, the general one. So it's exactly identical to what you have. So you can just go here general and then you can go uh, reset current workspace. So that's essentially how Maya should look like when you start. Um, so after the, the, the timeline, the animation timeline, um, we got the top menu buttons that you can see here above. And it, this is a series of uh, icons and buttons that's uh, usually used um, to, to do as a series of things and a series of shortcuts. So if we uh, switch to Maya very quickly and we zoom in a little bit of this, you do have things um, like they, these are different departments, right? And you've got this page button here is to make a new document, open documents, save documents. Uh, these two here is undo, redo. 
Then you've got different uh, selection uh, departments. So this is like you can select it with that within a hierarchy or individual objects, or you can select uh, by components. We'll go in depth with that. Anything with a magnifier icon. So you can see how it looks like a little magnifier kind of a thing. This is for snapping. And snapping is essentially like uh, you are snapping to other surfaces, or you're snapping to the grid, or you're snapping to vertices. We'll go a little bit on in depth with that as well a little bit later. Then here you have symmetry. Here you've got history. Here you've got rendering options. And then uh, going a little bit here on the right, you got things like um, moving things or renaming things and so forth. And that's the status line. It's a good idea to keep an eye on that because, for example, you got uh, the symmetry. Sometimes you might accidentally have symmetry on and off and you're not sure. Or sometimes you'll be snapping things on and off. You're not sure. Or you might have in here, you might have the history on and off. So it's important to take account with those things. Okay. Uh, last but not least, uh, the channel box is where you have a lot of the information of a specific uh, model or a specific object. So let's pretend that we have, I'm going to just hold down shift, right click, and I'm going to show you this in depth a little bit later again. And we're going to create uh, a sphere right, or an object. And usually what happens is, I'm going to move this fella out of the way here so you can still see me. So you might be able to move that here. There you go. So you might be able to, um, if you select this fella here, the channel box essentially enables you to fine tweak some of these components to, to move things. Uh, very specifically up and down and it's very fine because you can just go actually want that to be three and I want that to be one or two but I want that to be the scale of four so it, it enables you to be very specific on some departments but also enables you to go into the history and then you can change things in the history and this is all in a very rough overview and this is the channel box but also here you have your travel, your attribute editor, which is again going more in depth with a lot of the settings that we've seen. It's it's seen the attribute editor and the channel box. They're very similar, but the channel box is like an overview of all the things. Whereas the attribute editor is more like you've got tabs and you can you've got more options and it's a little bit more detailed by the different things that you can do. Don't feel overwhelmed by, with all of this. I'm just giving you like an overall kind of a thing so you can have a bit of an idea. Um, what we are going to do, because we are already on the 13 minute mark and I can't believe how quick time flies, to be honest. We are going to make this big for a second and I'm going to get everybody to create their first uh, primitives. I'm going to get rid of my beautiful face because we don't, I don't think we need to, to see anything with my face anymore. And we're going to have the same. So by the way, I'm just rotating and moving around with Alt, left click, middle mouse and left. Um, but what we're going to do is experiment uh, with the space bar how we can change very, very easily between the different modes. So let's just create by holding down shift and then right click on the viewport. Let's do a cube and then select the cube by drawing a box around it like that. And then press F and then we have the cube here. And what I, what I want to show you is if you if you tap with the space bar like that, you can very, very easily change between the different viewports. So you can go top, front, space bar, space bar, side, space bar, space bar, space bar, space bar. So this is a very easy way to switch between the, the ports. But 
I want you to also realize what happens each time that I press spacebar. There's a little bit of a blink of this weird menu. And what happens with this menu is if you hold down spacebar, by the way, you know, I hope that some of you know what the spacebar is, right? Because I have had classes where people don't know what a spacebar is. And if you don't know, sorry, I'm going to sound very condescending right now. Spacebar is this button here. That's the spacebar. And if you hold that button, that's the button that you have the menu. By the way, this is old this button here and maybe I should just use an actual my god they're gonna just judge me so heavily for this so this is this is control and that's alt and that's spacebar and that's uh, shift here okay um sorry some people don't know I, I mean it so uh going back to the to the thing so if you hold down spacebar Remember those menu sets that we were talking about earlier? So these fellas here are the menu sets for the modeling. These are for the rigging. These are for the special effects, fluids, and stuff like that. So you have access to all the menus in here very easily. Here it says view, shading, lighting, snow, and other panels. That's the same one as this one. So this is the same as this. But you also have very interesting shortcuts here. If you hold down a space by and left. So feel free to have a bit of a look because this can be quite useful. However, the one thing that I want to show you is if you hold down space by here and then left click, you also have access to perspective view, left view, right view. So if you go right view, top view, left view, they all look the same. So let's maybe put something that doesn't look too perfect on both sides. So let's put as well a sphere. And I will, I will show you this again. Let's put that here for now and also a torus. By the way, you might be all be thinking, hey, are you doing a lot of things that you're not explaining right now? I will get to that in a second. But I'm just, I just want to create something that's a bit more distinctive so we know what we're looking at. So you can change views very easily like this. So if you hold down spacebar, then left click in the center here where it says Maya. And this is where you can go right view, left view, top view, and so forth and so on. Okay, and then again, tap, 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 tap. Okay. Um, it is now 17 minutes and 50 seconds for the video, so it's time for me to uh, say goodbye with this, but I think that, um, yeah, it's a good time to to change this video now uh, to the next one. So uh, the summary of this video is you have uh, learned the different parts of the UI. I do suggest that you make some notes on the different parts. So we have the viewport, we have a toolbox, a shelf, a menu, status bar, channel box, and attribute uh, bar because I will be mentioning those to you over and over again whenever we're doing the steps. And it's important that you can recognize and be like, ah, the status bar, I know what that means. Ah, the attribute editor, I know what that is. Ah, the channel box, I know what that is. Because otherwise, uh, when I'm giving you steps and structures, you're gonna be like, what the hell is he saying? This is essentially why we're doing this first, yeah? Um, how to change perspective to other graphics with the space bar. Have a bit of a play with that as well, so you can change back and forward, all right? and um, how to access all menu sets by holding down the space bar, uh, but also to make changing the menu sets, okay? And just have a bit of an exploration. There is not a single button in Maya that says, explode, please kill me. Very few buttons will actually detonate the whole thing. And guess what? You can reinstall it again. Um, for the next video, we will do... Um, I'm going to set up a really nice scene for you guys. So it's going to be something where you can move things and you can rearrange things and you can put things in different places. 
And uh, with that, we're going to learn how to do uh, rotation, movement, and scale in a very nice way. But uh, we first, we're going to do is uh, how to set up a project, how to go open scenes, how to uh, navigate the cameras, which I did a bit earlier, but very roughly and very quickly. So we're going to do a bit of depth um, and how to do a little bit of uh, object manipulation. Yep. Okay, I'll see you guys soon, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.